Hey you guys, it's Brandy with Eternal Harvest Home Decor and you are standing in my brand new office. I am so excited to show you this entire project. It was a huge undertaking, but it really wasn't as difficult as it looks or seems. And so it's a DIY project, it's one you can do yourself. And I was going through Pinterest looking for inspiration. This is based off of this picture that I found. And then lumber prices, are crazy as you all know so this piece because there aren't any doors was doable as far as purchasing lumber the other half of the office though took a lot more lumber and I decided to do an Ikea hack instead so I'm splitting this up into a couple different videos because the first video is gonna be all about this open bookcase and the second part of the video will be about the Ikea hack and staging and doing everything else to the office so today come along with me I will show you how to build this big beautiful open bookcase and if you have a Craig jig and a couple saws and some drills you're good to go let's get started okay so first things first here is the before of our office and obviously it was a disaster but we just moved in a few months ago and this became the dump zone we threw everything in here and this is where my husband's been working poor guy so I started this process by organizing all of our paperwork, shredding the things we didn't need, and getting rid of the IKEA cabinets. And then I ordered lumber. Okay, so I actually had Home Depot rip down all this lumber for me. Um, and normally when I do that, things are not quite flush. But this is the piece below. Actually, <laughs> I'm really shocked. They must have gotten a new blade or something because um, this is pretty square. This is actually pretty good and I might be able to use this. So I'm gonna start laying out the pieces that I need to build basically two large, large boxes. One will go on top of the other to create this portion of the buildings. There's something on the other side that I don't have lumber for yet, but this is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start by cutting down the height of each of my boards. This will make my end caps and will set the height for the entire box. Next, I'm gonna start laying the box out on the ground because I tend to work on the ground. If you have a workbench big enough, feel free. As I lay this out, I'm able to cut each piece to the length and width that it needs to be and get a visual for how this box is gonna look. I am using three quarter inch pre-finished plywood. I'm doing this because I will not be painting the plywood. I'm gonna leave it raw like my inspiration picture. And this has been really cool to work with. It's somewhat shiny and very smooth. I liked working with it. Now each of these pieces has already been cut to the depth that I wanted. They were ripped down to 16 inch strips. And now I'm just cutting the length. Pro tip, when you have these stickers stuck to your lumber, you can use a heat gun, heat up the sticker, and it'll come right off without any residue left behind. Now I'm gonna pull out my table saw and make sure that each piece is actually the same depth. Now, as I was putting the first box together, I realized that not every piece of plywood was exactly the same depth like I had hoped. So I pulled out my table saw and ran each piece through so that I could make sure they were all the same depth. I have to give a shout out to my dust collection system. This is the Laguna P-Flux 1. I'm not sponsored, but this has been a really great dust collection system for me in my shop and I'm loving it. Okay, I was able to get all these pieces cut down the sides. Here, here, and right up there. This is a lot of work but everything worked really well and everything's ready to go tomorrow for assembly. 
I decided to use pocket holes as my form of joinery because they're easy for me to work with. I feel like they add a lot of strength and it would make the project go by a lot quicker. So I grabbed my Craig jig and put pocket holes in the vertical pieces that will act as the sides to create the box. Okay, so all the pocket holing is done and it's ready for assembly. I've kind of got it laid out here. I'm gonna do my end caps first because I want to make sure those are in line and square before I put my next two pieces in the middle to create the grid. I wanna be sure that my boxes are all the exact same sizing. And so first I'll do the outsides and then I can measure and make sure my other boxes are equal. Hopefully that makes sense. So on the first side, I tried to use these pony clamps. They are corner clamps, but I only had two instead of four, and it kind of made things difficult without four on each corner. So I essentially gave up on that and just laid it on the garage floor. I glued, I'm using type on two, and used Craig jig screws to assemble the top and the bottom to the side pieces. Now on these end caps, I did try to assemble with the pocket holes on the outside. This side will be up against a wall so the pocket holes won't be visible and on the other side, I will be using some trim to cover, cover up those. I'm just trying to minimize the amount of pocket holes that will be seen in the end result. Some will be, but not everything. Okay, so I have the cabinet carcass pretty much framed in. I need to put the dividers in. And the next part that I need to make is the base frame out of two by fours. I was going to use two by sixes because I have five and a quarter or five and a half inch trim. Um, so I just wanted it to look the part, but I think what I'm gonna have to do is layer two by fours instead of buying the two by sixes because the two by sixes were super expensive. A two by six was like 16 bucks and a two by four was down to $6. So I grabbed a few two by fours. I'm gonna do that now. And all I'm basically building is a box that will lay flat and the cabinet will sit on top of that. set up and now I'm gonna attach these but I had to do the math to make sure they were perfectly spaced and one quick tip that I want to give you guys when you are trying to make sure that things are evenly spaced and you have to do multiple spacings make yourself a jig or like a template this is the exact size spacing I need for these boxes so I'm gonna use this to put in between this way to make sure that my sides are perfectly lined up. I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. But spacers or jigs cut out to exactly what you need. They will make your life so much easier.
And here is the basic frame for the bottom cabinet. The top cabinet will be identical and sit on top of this one. Now I'm gonna take this into the office, put the base frame down of two by fours and set this directly on top. Now that was just a quick dry run to make sure it fit the way I wanted to. We took it back out to the garage so I could paint the room. So I'm painting the back of the wall and this is gonna act as the back of the bookcase. I would say that normally you'd like to use plywood on the back of your bookcase to help with sturdiness and it's just the better way to build. But the backing would have cost almost as much as the entire bookcase itself. And so I decided to forego that because of lumber prices and just anchor this bookcase to the wall with studs in certain areas where I knew there was a stud and it worked out just fine. I also anchored the right side of the bookcase to the adjacent wall on a stud as well. So it's anchored on the back and on the side to help it stay in place and make it nice and sturdy. Then I started assembling all the shelves and I just tried to make sure they were all level. I used my little pink level and then used pocket screws to attach them to each of the vertical pieces. I did measure this all out to make sure that it was perfectly square and that each box was the same size. I do still have my little plywood template that I used originally to do the vertical pieces and I'm using that to attach my shelving as well. I'm setting it down in the hole and then setting the shelf right on top of it and this ensures that each shelf is exactly the same height. And just like that, the bottom box is finished and now I'll start assembling the top. And I will do it in the exact same way. Now the top cabinet carcass is in place and I will attach it to the studs in the back and on the side as well to help it be nice and sturdy. Once all the shelves for the top piece were in place, it was time to start on the trim. I'm just using half inch MDF and cutting I was able size. to find 10 foot one by twos, or I guess it's half inch by two pieces to go the length of the bookcase. And then I use them for the top and all Now I did pre-paint the, the trim because I want the natural look of the lumber for inside the boxes. I didn't want to get any paint or risk that um, getting on the boxes on the inside. So I pre-painted the trim and just attached it with my brad nailer and a little glue is good to go. If you've enjoyed this process and are interested in the end result, I would love it if you subscribed and hit that little bell so you can get notifications of all my new videos. Thanks for tuning in. And that's it, it's all done. I love the way it looks, it's really sturdy. It was time to put books and decor in and finish painting the wall. If you wanna see the end result of the rest of the office, make sure to tune in for my next video on the Ikea hack and styling. And thanks so much for watching you guys, I hope it was helpful. I am just completely in love with this office transformation. See you guys next time.